Oh, Animal Crossing, I can't escape you. I love playing you, whether it's on New Leaf or on the original, but I can't escape your theories either. No matter how hard I try, the dark side of Animal Crossing pops up. And seeing my comments from my last Animal Crossing theory video, Are You Dead in Animal Crossing? Many being supportive, negative, and many which have said I have ruined their childhoods, and that the theory was too dark. So of course, here I am, doing it all over again. But many have also said that the last two theories on Animal Crossing that I have done are too unrealistic. So this time, I am bringing you a more realistic theory. So here we go, today's theory is, in Animal Crossing, you are actually in a futuristic post-apocalyptic world. Wait, don't go. Give me a chance to explain. Okay, now we have to ask ourselves. Why are there very few humans around? Why aren't there any real cities? Why are there so many animals and you seem to be the only human? Now what if I told you some sort of apocalypse wiped out the human species and the animals took over? Maybe humans finally launched their nuclear strikes and the nuclear blast and radiation caused the majorities of humans to die. And with the humans out of the way, animals grew intelligence and took over for the humans. Now this isn't a new concept, this was mentioned in the movie War Game. As as Dr. Stephen Falcon says with the humans out of the way, the bees would probably take over. It is also speculated by a lot of people that creatures like rats, octopus, and even cockroaches would survive and take over for us. But if all humans died out, how is your character here? Well, it's quite simple. You're a survivor. How did you survive though? It is said there's over 3 million doomsday preppers in America. Your character is a survivor by being a doomsday prepper, or a relative of a doomsday prepper, who hid underground safe from the blasts and radiation. While you and small groups of humans stay safe underground, those animals who were in safe zones away from the blasts and radiation, over time their intelligence increased, and they evolved into humanoid animal creatures that we see in the game. And we are the survivors who decide to exit their underground safe haven like in Fallout or the City of Ember. And we decide to join the new intelligent animals and befriend them. Now there's even more evidence, as relics from the past are seen throughout the games, such as famous paintings and statues, and old video games and consoles. And as the animals enjoy the luxuries of the past, it is a reminder that the humans have almost died out. And as the humans fall and their money burns to the ground, the animals create their own currency with bells, like the bottle caps and fallout. And speaking of money, why are the turnips so high in price? You never see any other vegetables in the game. You only see fruit. I mean, some people wouldn't complain about the loss of veggies, but veggies are a loved commodity and they are very healthy and can be used for flavor to many dishes. Fruits somehow survived. It appears veggies have almost but completely disappeared due to some effects of the radiation. Of how rare turnips are, as they are the only vegetable around, you and any other animal can buy and resell turnips, just like how us humans have done with the stock market. From what I can tell, everything fits into place. A nuclear war broke out and almost all of the human race was killed, and with humans out of the way, animals took over and evolved into intelligent creatures like humans. They built towns and businesses, and after a long time underground, us humans climbed back up to the surface and joined the animals. And together, the animals and the humans will live in peace, and together we'll both grow and create a better future. Except for one problem. Evolution. If we base this theory off of evolution, man must have hidden underground for a long time. Scientists say that evolution can last between 100,000 years to over a million years. I find that hard to believe that humans can live while hiding underground for 100,000 years, let alone 1 million years. Sure, an adult who just started living with no sun would be fine, but how about their children when they reproduce? In 2012, Russian police discovered 57 cult members living in an underground bunker and the Republic of Tardis Stand. Many of the children enclosed in the bunker have never seen the sun. It's very unlikely that an adult could die from prolonged darkness. The most plausible deadly scenario is that the lack of sunlight could prevent the body from producing vitamin D. In turn, would inhibit calcium absorption. Very low calcium levels might lead to spasms, causing suffocation. A proper diet, however, could easily stop these chain of events and other health consequences. But that just leaves another issue. Food. The doomsday preppers say that they stock up on average between 30 days to a year's worth of food. Even if they stock up more, 
Do you think they could stack up 100,000 to a million years worth of food? So it is possible to grow some vegetables underground, like lettuce, potatoes, radishes, and cauliflower. But growing these underground would require water, something that you may not have a lot of, especially 100,000 to a million years worth. So does this disprove the theory? No, it doesn't. Now, there's no way humans could live underground for that long, so we need to change things up a bit. So instead of the animals evolving over time after a nuclear war, what if the animals were already advanced? When the humans were fighting in their war, these sentient animals are created by old science experiments to combine human and animal DNA to create better soldiers for the war. The experiments succeed, but the world was already caught in a nuclear war before more could be created to be trained as soldiers. These animal people had better survival instincts and were stronger and sturdier, so they were able to survive and hide when most humans could not. The towns in Animal Crossing all exist in small safe zones away from the large portion of the earth that have become a nuclear wasteland. Humans survive in small numbers, but most of them die as the others survive in underground shelters. The player character is likely a descendant of shelter dwellers. These small group of humans leave after supplies run out and venture into the fallout-like wasteland and find the animals who accept them and allow them to join their small towns that exist in the safe zones. Or maybe the technology from Fallout 4 is implemented here, as your character and any other surviving humans are stored away in cryo chambers chambers for a hundred or more years. And if they are only underground for a hundred years or a little more, then it would be more malleable to plant those veggies and have enough water for the vegetables. Some humans may even be affected by radiations. Heck, this may explain the horns from the original Animal Crossing. But after a while, the humans and the animals are equal, living together in peace. But many may wonder, now who would try to combine human and animal DNA? That's just too crazy to be true, right? The year is 1910. Ilya Ivanov was a gifted scientist, a dedicated conservationist, and a practical grounded man who expected everyone's understanding of animal husbandry. He also, for years, tried to make human-ape hybrids. The post-revolution USSR was a nation that wanted to wholly embrace new technology and progressive science while reinforcing traditional pride. Then in 1910, at the World Congress of Zoologists, Ivanov described the idea of using artificial insemination to create human chimpanzee hybrids to an auditorium full of what must have been some very uncomfortable scientists but some were very supportive actually he tested on female chimpanzees who were repeatedly injected with human male sperm but none became pregnant he then looked for volunteers for five women to have male chimpanzee sperm injected into them. It was even said that he got one volunteer, but then he eventually got shut down. But this just shows that us humans would have been willing to test on animals, especially in a time of need like during a war. Now, this all makes sense. War broke out. Humans tried and successfully created half-human, half-animal hybrids for soldiers. The humans almost completely died out due to nuclear explosions. The animal hybrids escaped and survived, and created their own society. And after a hundred years or more, the humans leave their underground bunkers after they've run out of supplies and join the animals, and live peacefully in the safe zones away from the wasteland. Now the humans can learn from their past mistakes, and create a better future with their animal friends. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think of this theory in the comments below. I'd really love to know. And remember, it is just a theory. Again, thank you all so much for watching.